Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron and today we're going to be doing an updated guide for the Hurricane Guided Rocket System, my builds that I use for it without overclocks and with overclocks with each of the overclocks. And I will be having some footage of the overclocks playing so that you kind of get an idea. These will only be overclocks that really change the weapon though. So if it's just a slight increase rate of fire or slight damage bonus, it's going to feel very similar to the base Hurricane. Maybe feel a little bit better than it does, but it's not going to be uh, anything that's way flashy or anything like that. So in tier one, we have extra ammo, extra damage, or extra AOE radius. All three of these are actually really good choices. You can pick whichever one you'd like for your like uh, general purpose build. I think that they all work really well. Usually I go with extra ammo, but that's just me. If you like the extra damage, take that. And if you like the extra AOE, take that. I would say try out all of these. In tier two, we have faster jet speeds. This is more max velocity. So the missiles actually move quicker and they turn faster. That can be pretty useful. Our other option is anti-tank missiles, which is armor breaking. But usually I go with armor breaking here, but the faster jet engine is really nice too. This one's more personal preference than anything. If you want more damage towards large enemies, or at least to knock the armor off of large enemies, then anti-tank missiles works really well. If you want to uh, be constantly moving the jets around and hitting enemies, then bigger jet engine is a great option. In tier three, we have double the magazine size nano missiles, or we have increased rate of fire. Both these are really good options too. Usually I go with the rate of fire because the Hurricane's regular rate of fire is a little bit slow with this. It does boost it quite a bit. And I kind of like that increased rate of fire. I think 30 missiles is fine to have in the Hurricane normally. 72 is nice though too. So again, kind of personal preference, but I prefer this one. In tier four, we have bonus weak spot damage or we have extra area damage because our missiles do direct damage as well as they do area damage. So we do 16 direct damage and 20 area damage. Uh, these will be applied both onto an enemy that you hit directly. The weak spot damage is really nice, but so is the area damage. It's kind of your call here. I usually like going with the uh, more weak spot damage. I really wish the Hurricane would have a couple more like third options here so that we'd have a little bit more to play with. But for right now, this is what we got. Uh, usually I go with the weak spot damage though because I do like using this to kill big stuff. And then in tier 5 we have napalm infused rounds. This converts some of your damage into heat so that you can light enemies on fire. This is one of the best ways to get fire on gunner because it doesn't require any sort of overclock and it kind of works with most builds. It's really good if you do have an overclock like volatile bullets. Our second option is stun where we have a 25% chance to stun enemies for 3 seconds. Really good and just very useful overall. And then we have the nitroglycerin compound which this makes it so every 0.75 seconds that the missile is in the air it will gain an additional area damage. So the longer you can keep the missile going, I do think that there's a cap on the missile but I don't remember if it's just based on the missile life or if it's based on actually how long you can kind of keep the missile up before it just kind of hits a soft cap. Nitroglycerin compound is really difficult to get to work and I wouldn't really recommend you using it right away. It can be good, especially if you like taking really long shots with this, and it can be good with certain overclocks, but with the base hurricane, it's a little bit underwhelming. Usually I just go with the stun here. Stun is a great overall choice, and that's the way that I usually build my general purpose hurricane. Now the other way that I build the hurricane without any overclocks is kind of an AOE build to get rid of multiple enemies. So for this, you can either go with extra ammo or you can go with a larger AOE radius. Usually I go with the bigger AOE, that way we can kind of splash to multiple enemies. I usually go with the bigger jet engine so we have a little bit more turn radius, but the armor breaking is good here too. I still like the improved rate of fire, it's just really nice to have on the gun extra zip fuel to get extra AOE, and then I usually go with either the napalm rounds or the stun once again. Napalm rounds can spread fire, you can hit multiple enemies, light them on fire, which will deal damage over time. It's pretty nice for taking care of crowds, doesn't work so well against big enemies, uh, unless again you have like volatile bullets in the revolver or something like that, or somebody else has other synergies with fire, and then it can work. Or if you just have a real high damage secondary, like you put elephant rounds in your revolver, that can be good too. These are usually the two ways that I build the Hurricane without overclocks. So let's talk about each of the overclocks. Um, and first up, we have Manual Guidance Cutoff. Manual Guidance Cutoff is a clean overclock that makes it so when we release our trigger, we disable the guided rocket system. So we keep firing, our rockets are still going where we're pointing. As soon as we let go of that, they, go ex they just go straight from where they were. We get an additional 33% more velocity on top of this though, so our rockets do move faster. But honestly, this one is pretty underwhelming. I don't really ever use it. Whenever I've used it, it always has felt kind of awkward and more like a nerf to the gun than a buff. The way that I usually use this is the same way that I build my regular build. 
and use it more or less the same. Our second clean overclock is overtuned feed mechanism, and this one's really good. This one also gives you maximum velocity and gives you one additional rate of fire. So our missiles are moving faster and you can shoot them out quicker. This one is really, really good. And you can build it however you'd like. This one's another clean overclock. That's just a bonus. For this one, I do like taking the nano missiles in tier three. Um, you can go with the improved rate of fire and that is pretty fun too because you can be shooting really fast. But usually I just build something like this, um, pretty standard. And for this, I just have a faster moving projectile and I have double the magazine size. So all around just really nice buffs. And this is probably one of the best overclocks for the hurricane in my opinion. And then our final clean overclock is fragmentation missiles. This gives us extra area damage and extra AOE radius. This one I just build all AOE and I just try to hit as many enemies as possible. Um, this one is okay. Honestly, I haven't been using it that much. It feels a little bit... I'm not going to say underwhelming. The auto cannon seems to fit a similar role. And if you want to splash damage, this does give you more... Um, range than the auto cannon definitely because the auto cannon is pretty poor out to longer ranges where the hurricane can still hit things so it does have that going for it and if you like the auto cannon but you wish it had longer range this might be the overclock for you the way that I usually build this is extra AOE radius in tier 1 but extra ammo is great too either option in tier 2 is good uh, I usually go with the anti-tank missiles tier 3 I go with the faster rate of fire tier 4 I go with zip fuel and then tier 5 I either go with the decompression to um, stun multiple enemies or I go with the napalm to light multiple enemies on fire depends what I want to do if I want to do even more AOE damage then we move on to our balanced overclock so first up we got plasma burster missiles this one is really cool this one if you just look at it on paper it really hurts us but it's actually quite good. So what this one does is give us plasma burster missiles that they don't explode upon hitting an enemy directly. They will pass through the enemy, exploding once, and can explode multiple times, dealing damage to everything around it. This cuts our total damage in half, cuts our ammo by 108, cuts our area damage in half, cuts our AOE in half, and cuts down on our missile velocity. But it does give us faster turn rate, so it is a little bit quicker to actually turn the missiles around. Really cool. The way that I usually build this is going with extra ammo to kind of make up with our ammo. Extra damage is not a good option because it's still a halved amount of damage. So this only will give us two damage. Um, and extra AOE is also not great since our AOE is just not great in general. So extra ammo makes the most sense here. Both bigger jet engine and the anti-tank missiles are really good. Usually I go with the anti-tank missiles, but uh, if you do like the extra turn rate and you would like to get back to normal speed of the rockets, then jet engine is a really good choice. In tier 3, I go with the fast rate of fire, just feels really nice with this. Tier 4, I usually go with the weak spot damage because it's a little bit easier to hit the weak spot on enemies because you can just punch right through them and then just have the missile come right back through, hit them in the weak spot multiple times. And then in tier 5, I usually go with the uncontrolled decompression to stun enemies on regular missions. However, if I'm taking this on an elimination mission or sometimes an escort mission, I will switch over to nitroglycerin canisters because this just amps up your damage more because the missiles are likely going to be in the air for a little bit and with each explosion they still get the bonus damage uh, from nitroglycerin. So this one probably uses nitroglycerin the best. Next up we got mine layer system. This one also gives you manual guidance cutoff so your rockets will only go in a straight line. You can no longer control them. Well I guess it's all the time that it's cut off which makes it really difficult to hit flying enemies with this particular overclock. But if our missiles hit the ground anywhere, then they will become embedded in the ground, um, similar to the proximity mines of Engineer. If any enemies step near them, they will explode. They do take a little bit of time to uh, arm, and this scales off of your area damage, so it makes the most sense to go with more area damage. So in tier one, I usually like going with the missile belts for extra ammo, but the extra blast radius is pretty nice too. In tier two, I usually go with the bigger jet engine. This just makes it so I can put down the uh, mines a little bit quicker. Uh, the armor breaking, I don't think works on the mines themselves, but it will still work on the missiles. So if you're directly hitting enemies, the anti-tank missiles is not a bad option. In tier three, I usually go with improved rate of fire. It feels really nice and you can put down mines a little bit quicker. Tier four, we definitely go with zip fuel to get even more area damage. So our missiles scale up from that. And then in tier five, it really depends on what you want. Uh, stun can be pretty good for stunning multiple enemies or stunning large enemies. The uh, napalm infused rounds are really good too because you can have fire mines that light big things on fire, which is pretty great, especially if you're lighting oppressors on fire. Uh, or you can even go with the nitroglycerin rounds here and get a little bit more damage on your shots. It's completely your choice. Usually I'll go with the stun or I'll go with the napalm rounds depending on what other things I'm running. If I'm running volatile bullets, I'll run the napalm. If I'm running like magic bullets, then I'll run the decompression. And then for unstables, we have jet fuel homebrew. This one's one of my favorite overclocks. This one makes it so your missiles do much more direct damage, but less area damage. They move a lot faster. They have a lot less effective uh, area radius. 
you cut down on your magazine and you cut down on your total ammo. And this one is really good on dreadnought missions or if you want to kill big things very fast and I usually build it just for that. So in tier 1 I go with the uh, extra damage, this will get us up to 50 damage. In tier 2 I like going with the anti-tank missiles to do even more damage to armored things. Tier 3 I go with the improved rate of fire so I can shoot out a little bit quicker. Tier 4 I go with the weak spot damage so that we are doing even more damage when we are hitting big things. And then in tier 5 I usually go with the stun. You could go with the nitroglycerin here too if you like, but I find that the stun is pretty consistent. Maybe switch it over to nitroglycerin on like dreadnought missions. If you want to take this for regular missions I do really like the stun for it. With this build you can one shot headshot grunts normally. You can also two shot body shot them with this build. And uh, it kills things like Praetorians incredibly quick. The only real downside to this is that you do have a reduction in your overall ammo, so I would recommend going with a high ammo secondary, but aside from that, jet fuel homebrew is really good. And then our last unstable overclock is salvo module. Salvo module doesn't really come at any downside, which is very odd for an unstable overclock. Um, the only downside is when you hold down the trigger, it starts charging up the rockets, and then you can fire these out like a shotgun. You can charge up to nine rockets, for each rocket that you charge, they will get additional damage as well as they will be moving faster than normal. You can still fire this one at a time and still have manually guided rockets. When you have them charged up, they are no longer manually guided, they just fire out like a shotgun. The way that I usually build it is going with extra ammo in tier 1, I go with armor breaking in tier 2, I go with the improved rate of fire in tier 3. This also affects how fast your missiles can charge up um, on the actual gun itself, so when you're holding down the trigger, this I find pretty useful. In tier 4, both of these are really good options. You could go with weak spot damage or you could go with area damage. Usually I go with extra area damage. It kind of helps the shotgun out a little bit. And then for tier 5, it's your choice. The napalm infused rounds are really good. It's very easy to light enemies on fire with this. It's very easy to light crowds on fire with this. The stun is also really good because once you've charged up maybe 3 to 4 missiles, you're almost guaranteed to stun anything. You'd have to just get real unlucky to not stun stuff, and if you charge up all nine, you're virtually stunning anything that you hit, at least that can't be stunned. So those are all the builds that I use for the Hurricane Guided Rocket System. I know this list may have not have changed a whole lot from the previous list that I made, but there's a whole lot more new people coming to Deep Rock, and this was next up on the uh, weapons list. So sorry if this seems a little bit uh, repeated or recycled if you've seen this before. Uh, but I still feel like it could be useful to somebody that may have not seen those older videos. So, and also when I was doing those older videos, the uh, hurricane was still being reworked quite a bit where like napalm rounds got changed three or four times. It was very odd. Uh, anyway, thanks everybody for coming. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out. Tell me your favorite builds and overclocks for the hurricane down in the comments below. I would be interested to hear that. Special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this. And if you would like to be a part of that, you can. There's links down in the description. Thanks to everybody who does that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!